Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of CGS Live Fairfax Special. Uh, we're going to continue working on our tidal wave today. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to go exactly. There's a few things, a few things still to do. Last week, if you remember, we started setting up the RBD sort of destruction of buildings. Um, but there's still lots to do for the water and splash integration. Um, so yeah, lot, lots of things to do. I hope everyone's having a good weekend or had a good weekend. It's Monday for me. Um, and yeah, thanks, thanks for joining me. Let's get stuck in. So I'm just at the moment, just to make working a little bit faster, I am caching my simulations that I've done in the previous you know, two streams to disk. So yeah, that'll just help me work around and navigate through things a little faster, which would make it, make life a little bit easier. Um, so I'm just going through and putting file cache nodes down, caching all this stuff to disk for the duration. Uh, and I actually did a render over the week. Um, let me see, I've closed it. Let's open it again. Um, I did a render to see, to see what this kind of looked like. So I'll just open up Memplay and let's see. Load this in. So I did a little bit of work on uh, the shader of the wave as well, but you know, mainly I just brought, brought the buildings in. Um, whoop, let me just hit preferences, use nearest frame. I only rendered this out every second frame because it's quite slow render. So rendering out every second frame just goes through a little bit quicker and it sort of shows me everything that I need to see. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's obviously lots of things to do here. Hey, Audrey, how's it going? How's your week been? Um, so yeah, there's, you know, there's lots of things to fix and work on here, but this is really good to see. At least we can sort of see what's working and what isn't. Hey, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, I had a pretty, pretty good week. Can't complain. Just, uh, you know, working in Houdini, doing effects, blowing things up, doing cool stuff. Not a bad life. Um, what are you working on at the moment, Audrey? Hey Paige, how's it going? Thanks for joining me. Yeah, that's that's right, Ash. I think, you know, a lot of the broad strokes are kind of done. And now, you know, now it's just about about polishing it, like you say. I think, you know, there's still a few kind of um, elements. So I think today what I might look at adding is a few flip elements. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for asking, Paige. Um, I think, yeah, today I'd like to investigate adding a few flip elements and see if we can if we can get some really watery feeling elements in there. And that just might help sell the overall effect. Um, the base of the wave is something that I'd really like to work on as well because that is something that's sort of lacking in terms of integration. There's nothing happening there. There's no sort of splashiness or white water happening there. So maybe maybe some sort of flip element down there throwing water forwards might might kind of work oh page what are we doing today first time joining well thank you for joining me today we're going to just keep refining this shot so if you haven't seen the previous two streams have a look in the um have a look in the description and that's where i've built the rest of this um and today i'm just going to keep refining it and trying to make it you know feel a bit more realistic obviously it's it's hard to get, you know, perfect realism in something that's so unreal, like a giant wave like this, but, you know, we'll try and get it as close to reality as possible. Um, so, you know, at the moment, there's no, apart from the particles, which are, you know, sort of the only simulated element here, the wave is all geometry. So I'm looking to try and increase the realism by adding some simulated elements. And I wanted to keep this pretty light, this, this whole setup, so it's not like an overly complex simulation task. Um, and so far, so far we've done that. We've kept it, you know, we've kept it really light and that's great, but 
you know, it is kind of lacking a little bit. The other thing that we're not kind of doing at the moment is we're not really colliding with the buildings. We're just sort of using them as emitters. And, you know, now that we've got the building destruction in there, we're kind of not really emitting off of that destroyed building. We're still emitting off the, the kind of static building that was there previously. So, you know, updating things to work with collisions and just trying out, you know, different techniques. So, you know, this is all just freeform stuff. This is me just working and trying to figure things out. So I don't really plan, uh, you know, how I'm going to do these shots when I start them. I just, this, this was a request for someone, uh, someone wanted to see a request of, of a tidal wave. So I, you know, I took that on board and I thought it might be a cool thing to do. And that's, that's a good point, you know any requests that people have or any cool effects that you guys might want to see, please feel free to um, suggest them in the comments or, or suggest them in the chat. Uh, and I'll make a note of them. And when, you know, when we've got a new subject, we'll, I'll have a look through the, through the requests and through the kind of suggestions and choose one that, you know, I think might be a cool thing to work on. So please, if you have any ideas or things you want to see, you know, me work on, um, feel free to, uh, to suggest them. Um, Audrey doing concept art homework lately, cleaning up after Ray rabbits. Oh no. <clears throat> How do you request? Just, uh, just mention it in the comments, um, Gatling ghost, or if you, you know, don't have an idea during, during the stream, if you have an idea afterwards, just post it in the, um, in the YouTube comments after the video. Earthquake. Okay. I like it. All right, let me uh, let me write this down so I don't forget. Um, I'm gonna create a sticky note here. Earthquake. Yeah, I, I actually was um, looking at some stuff this morning on YouTube, and and uh, I thought an earthquake would be cool too. Buildings getting destroyed and, and crumbling and stuff. Black hole or cool space effect. Okay, cool. Black hole space effect this is great guys definitely um yeah keep them coming this um cool space effect volcano uh well Paige, if you with a cyclone i did um i did do a kind of tornado in a couple of streams back if you want to have a look through um and check that out because that was pretty cool you know i didn't really finish it off but um but it was a pretty cool, pretty cool little uh, effect that we came up with, with um, a little bit of building destruction as well. So definitely check out the tornado one that's already up there. Um, planet colli <laughs> and with flying elephants. That's right, Audrey. Um, planet colliding. Yeah. Okay. Planet colliding. Space debris. Wow. So many ideas out there. This is awesome. Um, earthquake, black hole, cool space effect. Well, look, keep keep them coming, and I'm I'm gonna keep working on the wave. Um, but yeah, like anytime, just suggest them. If if you think of one after the stream, then um, then please just you know post them in the comments. Um, you doing a three D city to put in your portfolio, Ash? Oh, that's cool. Are you you doing that in Houdini? Hey, Aram. Nice to see you, man. How are you? Aram is a student of mine from a long time ago. Happy lockdown. Anyone in, uh, in Victoria, Australia, would know that we're in lockdown this week again. Because we have like 40 cases here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thanks, Aram. Just... Uh, Stuck at home, like you probably. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's see what's happening. So I've cached most of these things to the disk. It looks like there's still this thing, this ray might be a slow step. So perhaps I should have cached that to disk at that. Uh, modeling in Maya to put in UE4. Game industries ask more UE to environment. Yeah, that's right. Um, Though a lot of a lot of games companies do use Houdini for 
you know, for environmental stuff, but it may not be modeling necessarily, but more like, um, I guess, scattering and scene, scene dressing and, and population of environments. Um, so Houdini is definitely a good one to learn for games as well. Uh, all right, so yeah, let's let's have a look at this kind of the base of the wave. So I'm going to turn off all this stuff. It's a little bit slow. So here's our base. Let me turn off materials as well. And lights, why not? There we go. So we've got this stuff happening. And I think our shot duration actually is probably around, if we have a look at the render, I only rendered up to frame 78. I reckon probably frame sort of, you know, 80 or 90 is probably our cap. So let's, uh, let's drop that. You can see at 90, we're in the wave. So let, let's just leave that at 90. I set my duration. Anyway, we can save a few frames of rendering would be, uh, would be useful. Um, so yeah, we've got our wave here, which is a cool little geo effect. And we want to kind of deal with this, the, the sort of the connection between the wave and the ground and deal with like, you know, what, what is happening there? We've got this here. If you remember, we created a relative bounding box to take the sort of bounds of this shape. And then we're running that through a ramp to, to flatten the geometry there. So we could use that same information to generate some points. We have that color there. Even if I just scattered onto that and used color as a density attribute. Oh, Kalgoorlie, cool. Yeah, well, good that you don't have any cases. Um, I mean, we don't have loads, but it is the uh, it is the way, you know, in Australia, I guess, because we don't want a complete, uh, you know, pandemic here like like they have seen in other parts of the world um, that we do lock down pretty quickly. Hopefully, hopefully they can get on top of it. But um, yeah, so it was it was starting to feel like there was no coronavirus here in Victoria for a while, but uh, guess we can't be that lucky. All right, so there you go. So you can see, based on this ramp that I have for the flattening effect, I can scatter points on that, and that works pretty well, actually, as going to be in a, as an emission. So let's hmm, let's see. What can I do? I'm actually going to I'm going to take the wave here at this point. I'm going to do all this in a separate node. So I'm going to say out wave for for base. I'm going to take the scatter, create a new geometry. It's always good to kind of do each very different effect in a different geometry container. So let's call this wave base. Ah, uh, yeah, Ash, I've, uh, I've heard that in Brazil, things aren't, aren't really going so well. It's terrible, you know, to hear about all the different, you know, the different countries around the world and how how bad it is for a lot of people. Um, it's, yeah, it's really awful to hear about. I feel, I feel lucky that, you know, that we have managed to escape a lot of, you know, a lot of the problems that, that have occurred. Um, hey, no worries, Paige. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining me and, and make sure to check back or, or, you know, check into the other streams if you're, uh, if you're interested, but thanks, thanks for joining me. So, <clears throat> let's let's take this scatter here and actually I might put that trail back on because I because I merged this sort of above where we were I'm missing this trail which is calculating the velocity of the wave so I'm just going to recalculate that compute velocity got my velocity marker here so there's those bells they might be useful for flip so let's yeah why don't we just send this into a dot network and set up a quick flip simulation and see what this kind of looks like. I, I was trying to avoid, you know, kind of flip as much as possible, but it might be, you know, it might be cool just to have some flip elements and just, just help kind of tie it all together a little bit. So yeah, no worries. Anytime page. So flip object, flip solver, and I'm going to use a volume source, even though it doesn't really sound like the correct thing to use, but it does now have this particles tab, source particles. 
first context geometry will grab the first input and do, do. Gatling Ghost has been following CG Spectrum for four years, 11 months and 21 days. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing, Gatling Ghost. Well done. Um, so group, I don't have a particle group, so I'll get rid of that. And there you go, you can see mine appear. Now I have this weird box here and that comes from the flip object. So I'll just get rid of that. And then we've got our particles coming in. They come in as giant balls. So on the flip object, guides, particles, just turn off sprites, set it to visualization particles, then we can just see the individual points. And we've got this giant container. So in order to get a ground happening, uh, what do I do? Oh, actually, I'll use a ground plane. I was gonna use the, just the container as a ground collision, but I think I'll use a ground plane. Usually get better results with a ground plane, a bit more of a sticky behavior. Let's see, and that is right on the ground there. So I'm just gonna drop it down slightly. There we go. Okay, we don't have gravity. So let's chuck a gravity node in. <laughs> it's very precise. Yeah, I, uh, well, I, you know, I was just reading those, that very specific. It didn't give me minutes and seconds or hours, unfortunately, but. Um, all right, so let's hit play and see what we get. Our particle separation is 0.1. At this scale, that's probably okay. Let's just see what happens. Hit play. Flip away. It's pretty quick. Could be a little bit faster. It's not really splashing forwards very much, so the velocities probably are a little low. You can see though that it's giving me that flip motion. Looks like our bounds are actually clipping there. So I'm gonna click on the flip solver and then hit enter in the viewport and just drag that over like that. And then I might actually just pull these in just to make this slightly more efficient. Like this. And then if any particles do happen to go below the ground plane, which is pretty unlikely, I'll just pull this up so that they die if they do. And it's always a good idea to look through the camera just to see, you know, kind of where your bounds sit in relation to the camera. So just to make sure that you're not going to clip anything that needs to be there. Alrighty. I'm going to take my particle separation up a little bit. Is there every chance that my camera will freeze while I do this? It seems to be related to uh, doing simulations, but hopefully, hopefully it stays on. Um, all right, so yeah, it's you know it's kind of just being emitted and falling. So let's crank up the vels. I'm going to do that with a wrangle. I'm just going to say v at v times equals ten go 10 times should be hopefully easy to see the result of that boom there we go look at that already that actually looks pretty cool i mean it's very intense but i really like you know what's happening there there's some really kind of cool things and with flip you just get these really nice shapes so that's that's awesome it's crazy <coughs> excuse me it's crazy but you know Crazy is good. Working in effects. It, you know, when you compare it to the size of the wave, it's uh, it's nuts. It's really just too insane. But if that was scaled down, you know, much more closer to the wave. So let's let's turn that down. <coughs> Sorry, I've got this really annoying cough at the moment. Um, I'm trying to talking for two hours straight is not the best uh, not the best when you have a cough, but I will try and keep it under wraps. So I'll take it down to two times. There we go, it's a little better. I'll mute, mute my microphone for you when I, when I cough, that will uh, save you the pain. All right, so that that's looking kind of cool. You get this nice rolling effect happening because we're taking the vels from that rolling motion of the wave, we're getting this nice kind of rolling feeling of the water. So that's cool. It's sliding like crazy across the surface of this ground plane though. So let's up 
the friction. Turn bounce down. Friction on there is one. On the flip object, let's check the physical and you can see friction is zero. So take that up. Hopefully we'll get less running across the surface. But we can actually increase friction as well. Like I can just put that to 10, say. Hopefully we'll get you know, quite a bit more sticking going on. We may be seeing the source there as well. You can see these particles that get left behind are really stuck now. So, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe that friction is a little high, but now we're not getting that crazy stuff shooting in front, which is good. Some really interesting things happening. So let's compare it with our wave. So I'm just gonna, just for now, use the .NET object merge and just go flip object in there, flip object star, because I don't want to bring out the ground plane, and then just merge that with my wave. So we're still, you know, still a bit big. Maybe our original scale that we had before the velocity move multiplication was fine, I don't know, but you can see, you know, it's bringing some really interesting sort of uh, velocities and motion to the scene, so that's cool. All right, let's, let's try and run it without this, because maybe it was fine, maybe I just kind of wasn't viewing it in the right sort of scale or thinking about it in the right scale. We can also like randomize these velocities a lot, maybe with some curl noise, just to um, just to really, you know, create variance. So, yeah, it is still kind of lacking with with that at two, but maybe it doesn't need to be two times velocity. Maybe it can just be like one point five or one point two five, just to push it ahead by a little bit. We can also add things like drag and um, other forces to to help slow down really fast things. So they come out fast, but then slow down. That might might also help. Now 1.25, it's sort of carrying it slightly ahead of the wave. And maybe that you know kind of works well. We also don't have the wave in as a collider, which is good to avoid if you can help it because it's slow to do that. But it may kind of, um, you know, it may help to have the wave in there to push things along. Interesting thing that's happening here is because we're sourcing based on the bounding box colors that we were generating, as this wave comes over and enters that space, because it's based on height, you can see I'm getting particles coming off the crest there, which is actually kind of cool. Maybe a little bit early, but it's kind of nice that we're getting particles emitted off of that crest when it comes down. It's something I didn't really think about, but... You know, it's a kind of cool little element. So let's have a look on the side view and see what's happening here. We're getting a lot of particles just traveling upwards, I think, because of that velocity. So we're getting a lot of particles sort of just getting sucked up and then as they sort of finish emitting there, they're sort of spilling back down feel like I might want more sort of bubbling up in this area. So what I'm going to do is with my velocities, you can see they're all sort of pointing forwards like that. They're all kind of fairly uniform. There's a bit of noise on the wave, so they're a little bit kind of wobbly, but let's put a point velocity node down. And I'm going to do keep incoming and set curl noise on there. So play with the kind of scale. Uh, swell size is the sort of size of the noise, so you know the larger that is, the larger the noise, obviously. So bring that down if you want a higher frequency. You also you have two, so you have swell size there and also swell size here. This would allow you to get non-uniform scaling in in one axis. I usually just use that one. Grain, you have to be careful with. You don't want to go too crazy with grain, especially not over one, because you can see it just creates really high velocities. But that will give you more variation across your noise. Adding more turbulence as well will give you more layers of noise within that noise map. So, there you go. You can see it's amped it up a little bit, but it's also going to introduce a lot, of, a lot more sort of noise going on. <clears throat> I may also do a multiplication with 
um, with a point bob and some noise just to kind of see if that helps. So turn that down, let's see what we get now. Not getting as much sort of bubbling as I was hoping for there. I'm just gonna turn, I'm just gonna take the ground plane down a little bit more. Just wanna make sure that that's not kind of interfering with anything. Maybe I just need to crank up the velocities as well. So what I might do here, instead of my attribute wrangle maybe, I'll do a point bop. And I'm gonna do a turbulent noise multiplying velocity that plug that back into the velocity output and that will give me now the ability to kind of multiply this noise up and down so as we go forward you can see this kind of noise pattern in there as I change the frequency you'll see that kind of move let me set this to auto update so you can kind of see that noise pattern in there move so that is a way for me to kind of control where there are going to be areas of high noise and low or high velocity and low velocity. If I put a fit on that, it allows me to control what that multiplication is doing. So when the noise values are kind of one, they're going to multiply up the velocities by two. And when the noise values are kind of zero or black, then, you know, maybe I don't want it to multiply down to zero. Maybe I just want to multiply it down to half so I don't get complete reduction of value. So two times and half times, that, that might be okay. And then you can also crush the noise here. So a good way to view the noise is just to plug it into the color so we can sort of see what it's doing. And there you go, you can see that there. So if we plug the fit in, <coughs> these values will kind of mess with the color. So usually set them to zero, one. But then it allows me to crush the noise to make it more contrasty. So you know, something like that maybe, and I'll set these back to 0 0.5 to 2. And it just, you know, it gives me, gives me a way of getting kind of greater peaks and troughs in the noise. So you can see there, you know, as I'm adjusting that, I'm just getting these kind of areas of spiky velocities here. Um, as I take that down, it sort of introduces more of that. So it just gives me greater control for that stuff. And I don't really need to offset this noise or animate it at all because the wave is moving through space. So you will see it sample different parts of the noise. Although actually it's not really sampling it very quickly. So I think, I think perhaps maybe it would be good to have some offset. So let's promote this. And I'm just gonna maybe animate this with $F. And then we'll get that phasing through. So we should get like really quick changes of crazy velocities in there, which might help make a bit of a splashy sort of result. So let's have a look at that. And I find with flip as well, because having color on your points kind of messes with the display in, uh, in flip, usually just reset them to white so that we can see, because the default is based on velocity, the default guide particles based on speed, these colors relate to how fast the particles are moving. And I can see on frame one, they already these ones already have higher velocities than the others. So I can kind of see where those spikes of velocities might be. And they're still way too low. So let's go higher. Maybe I'll promote my min and max. Let's go five. And maybe we'll just leave that at one. <coughs> there we go. So you can see those kind of those areas splashing out a little more, which is kind of cool. Now to calm some of this stuff down, because it is a little bit crazy, I'm gonna put a drag down. So pop drag. And we've got particle velocity tab here, or input, and I'll just plug it in there and turn that way down, maybe uh, zero 0.5. And that should help to sort of tame some of the really crazy velocities that are coming out. We might need to increase the air resistance, but you know, it does just help to sort of rain that stuff down. It's gonna multiply it down the velocities over time, every 
every sub step. And you know, always good to compare it with our wave. So just, just sort of checking and seeing what's going on. But you can see there's some really interesting sort of splashes and things happening. And our resolution is really low. So yeah, let's take that down. A little bit, we'll see a bit more detail coming through. <clears throat> and it will be a bit slower, but higher or lower particle separation, higher resolution will result in much more detailed splashes and just better quality of flipsim overall. So hopefully that you know starts to look kind of cool. So you know that's kind of interesting what's going on there. It's possibly still a little large scale. We may want to just kind of tweak our source a little bit as well so that you know maybe we don't need to source so high up the wave here. Because what we could do on that is just take our original color that we had there that we created and we could crush it. So if I just run that through a fit, what I might do is just do a vector to float to split just the red channel off the color so that I can run it through a single float fit otherwise running a color through a fit results in a vector fit which is a little bit harder to kind of work with so usually just because we're just dealing with black and white splitting one channel is fine and then outputting one channel back to color and now I can sort of you can see how I can crush that now just down to where it is really actually white and that just gives me the base or I could just sort of reduce that. So it's like, you know, kind of like that. So it's not all the way up the wave anymore. It's just right down at the base. Something like that, maybe. Increase our amount. So we've got 500,000 points in our source now. Let's see what that looks like. The more points you add, it's going to be slower. So, you know, it's just something you need to kind of deal with, but you just, you're definitely going to get much better results having more points um, with flip and you're going to get that, that nice kind of detail. So sometimes you just have to kind of deal with it. And this is the reason why I've kind of been avoiding flip as much as I can, because it, it is slow when you get to, you know, wanting a lot of detail. Here we go. So that's sort of reduced the height now, which is cool. So let's, uh, let's cache this to disk. I'm going to steal one of these caches that I created. Um, where is it? Here. Because I have a custom file path on here. You can see I have this variable called dollar wave. And I made that because I was running out of space on my drive that this file is located on. So I didn't want to keep using dollar hip. So <clears throat> I created a custom variable. If you go to edit, aliases and variables, I created this variable. You just type it down here, call it whatever you like. I called it wave. And then I put in the path that I wanted wave. When I write dollar wave, I wrote the path that I wanted it to point to. So when I now type dollar wave, it gives me that path. It evaluates to that path. So if I do, oops, dollar wave slash geo, it's going to put it in the geo folder in this wave shop folder. So it's just a nice handy way of kind of uh, creating your own custom variables for paths. It's really kind of cool, really useful. Now, here's another useful trick. I'm going to put my view flag down here and I'm going to turn off load from disk and set write files. And we're going to write from zero. So I've got a relative reference here. So I'm just going to copy start frame, copy parameter, paste relative reference. So then it's going to grab the start frame of this simulation. If I happen to change that or have it not be um, zero or some other frame, it'll just take that. And then the end is just taking the end of the, um, the, end of the timeline. 
So I want to flip book this, but I also want it to cache to disk at the same time. So I'm not like wasting time by having to flip book after I simulate it. <coughs> so what I can do is set that to write files and then have my view flag down here and then do a flip book. So I'm just going to put a random number in my ses session label. So it starts a new session and hit start. And now it's going to do my flipbook. It has to calculate my simulation to display it. But because that file cache is also set to write files, it's also writing that to disk as this is flipbooking. So I kind of kill three birds with one stone to coin an odd phrase. Um, but yeah, I, I find this a really useful thing because you get your flipbook and you can also watch your simulation at the same time. So, you know, if I don't like what's happening with my simulation, I'll just hit escape and then I can go and change something and redo it. Usually when you hit sim and write to disk, you wait, you just, you watch the progress bar and you wait for your, you know, result. Then you flipbook it. So this is a way just to save a bit of time and also to watch what's happening in your simulation while you're caching it to disk. So, um, yeah, I, I find that a really useful way of working and, and it saves me, you know, it saves me time. Then being able to cancel like halfway through because I can see there's a problem, I can go back and fix it. That That's really also very useful. So, yeah, anyway, we'll watch this and uh, let it go through and hopefully, you know, hopefully it kind of looks all right. It definitely is not the resolution that we'll need for very high quality, but at least we'll be able to see kind of what's, you know, what's happening with it. Um, I think someone asked in the comments as well on last week's stream about getting the hip file for these projects. That's not really something that I, uh, that I share out, especially if they have assets that, uh, you know, belong to the school. Um, but if there are specific questions that you have that, you know, I can help with, with things that didn't make sense or I went quickly over things, you know, these are not intended to be sort of, you know, very detailed tutorials where I just show you exactly how to do this stuff. Um, because I'm just making it up as well. It's sort of, uh, you know, it's a follow me, follow me approach to create something similar. So if there are things that don't make sense, then, you know, things that you want me to go over, please, please just ask, ask in the comments or in the chat, if you, you know, if you're here live, or if you're not, if you're watching this back, and you want to kind of want me to explain things a little more, then please, you know, please just ask about it. Um, there may, there may be certain hip files that I can share from time to time, but, but when they have assets in them, then, you know, it's unlikely that, that I can do that. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that I can explain more or things don't make sense, then please, please just ask about it. Um, so there we go. Kind of looking a bit weird towards the end. <clears throat> but you can see that it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit crazy and chaotic, but it gives that really nice kind of flip splashy motion. So I think it's pretty cool. Definitely want to rein it in. But um, I think it's, you know, I think it's working quite cool. Now, one more thing with this workflow is make sure you turn on load from disk when you're done, because if you keep leaving it on write from disk, every time you move something or change something, it's going to write that. So you just need to tick on load from disk to stop that from happening. And then you've got your cache and you can kind of have a look at it. So yeah, scale, you know, still a bit kind of off, I think still a bit too, feels a bit small scale for the scale that this actually is because we can see, you know, a lot of these large sort of scale tendrils. It's probably just, you know, feels like a much smaller event rather than a very large event. So scale is something that, you know, people often um, struggle with when they're starting out in effects. And it's just something that you need to, you know, you need to be mindful of and you need to look at reference. And when you see like really large scale noise shapes and you know very large tendrils of things it it kind of makes it feel like it's a smaller scale event usually with very large splashes and things there's just like a ton of really fine details some larger ones as well but they're usually supported by a lot of very small details that's that fractal geometry kind of idea where you know 
you just have this kind of infinite light level of detail and noise so <clears throat> it's always something to look out for now to kind of to help that you know these are being generated these are being generated by our noise here so it's hard to see with our with our um with our vectors here but you know our noise has these quite large noise patterns so let's go to our turb noise and up our frequency to get much smaller shapes maybe our roughness too to get a lot of like small dots might help and then that hopefully will create a lot more sort of um, smaller splashes and smaller kind of tendril shapes that all blend together so let's have a have a bit of a look at that let's see what that looks like and do the same thing again you know just turn off load from disk let's open up our flip book hit start new sequence and then try it again so we should see that start to populate this one again and then we've got the sequence list here so we can flick between them to see you know the differences and you can already see this newer one coming through does have a lot more sort of smaller stuff splashing up so that's cool it's working um so we'll let that run through for a bit it's not not a crazy long simulation but you know it's relatively slow you're all very quiet out there in streaming land i hope you're still there hopefully my internet hasn't gone down i'm just talking to myself um so yeah you know you can you can kind of see you can kind of see that difference when we flick between there's our original one that we had and there's our there's our newer one which you know it still has some of those large details but there's a lot more smaller stuff going on which is cool so hey david how's it going welcome glad glad you can make it is it is it late for you over there I don't know what time it is. I don't know what time it is for you guys. Um, was it like dinner time or something? Ah, you're still there. Hey, Aaron. Um, yeah, so there we go. It's maybe feeling a little better. There's still some really large shapes in there, but our resolution, you know, is part of that as well, I think. It's just we don't have a ton of particles here um so you know it's probably it's probably a bit of that as well i'm gonna let this run out it's not taking that long and uh we'll we'll have a bit of a look at it and see if we can you know maybe do some up resing as well or potentially use this as a source for some some flip you know spray and foam um it's probably getting you know looking at this frame we don't want to completely obliterate everything with this flip sim. So it probably is still getting a little bit large. Um, it was, you know, it was just meant to be a kind of along the ground thing. It can be easy to forget, you know, what you intended to do when you started, when you get carried away with simulations. But it was just meant to be quite a small thing along the ground to tie in the ground. So uh, it might, it might be a bit, a bit too full on. So, yeah, especially towards kind of here, it just starts to get a little bit too, too kind of crazy. Almost done. Oh, that'll do. So, yeah, I can hit escape at any time. Just tick load from disk back on. And then we can sort of see, you know, what that's looking like. It's interesting that we don't get too many particles left behind, even though we don't have a collider. So that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we're getting a ton of stuff here. Look at that. A lot of water being churned up. Which, you know, it's not, not too bad, but let's, um, let's have a look. One thing, oh, one thing that I should have done with this flip simulation is turned on create vorticity so on the flip solver particle motion vorticity 
it, it's a really really useful attribute when you <coughs> oh, excuse me ah oh, man um when you're doing flip sims because we can use that to generate foam and spray it, it basically gives you an attribute uh which scales based on how much change or how much curl is in the sim so it's useful i don't have it so i can have a look at what else i can do let's create a wrangle here and i'm going to say at cd equals length v at v and that's going to give me a color based on the speed but you can see here this is just all white so that range is really high if i have a look at my spreadsheet you can see my color values are up to 31 so let's just put this in a fit fit length between 0 and 31 between 0 and 1 that now will give me normalized colors and you can see now i've got a much better color range going so that's going to be useful. Now we could create these and make them channels. So we could say ch uh, v min and ch v max. And then I'll have some sliders that I can play with this. So you can see now I can actually dial this in a little bit, which is handy. So. I can really crush those values now as well. Pull them down. And get these kind of isolated, really fast sections as color. And then, you know, there's lots of, so many ways of kind of doing things in Houdini, but one way to get rid of those or to isolate them would be to do at cd.x greater than zero, delete non-selected, set it to points. And that isolates any point that has a value a color value greater than zero and you could bring that up as well so that you just get the ones that are purely white <coughs> but you could also do that in an attribute wrangle so you could say if at uh well you could do it a few ways in here so you could say if at length v at v is less than uh, what have we got here? Let's say 7.1 or 7. Or we could actually link that to the channel as well. So we could say less than v min. Ah, oh, sorry guys. Crazy, crazy coughing. Um, if length v at v is less than channel v min, remove point. So zero for the first input at pt num to run it over all points. Erroring, why are you erroring? Oh, missing a bracket. There we go. So you can see, as I change this now, it removes those points as well. So that's kind of handy. I kind of prefer doing it in a blast or, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe the way I've set that up isn't so intuitive, but that, you know, that's another way to kind of do it. I'm going to do it in the blast just so it's easier. <coughs> oh man. Okay. I might have to uh I might have to go for a bit. <coughs> I might um leave this running
All right, I'm back. Let's try and uh, try and keep it together. Um, sorry about that, guys. I'm yeah, struggling with my uh, my cough this morning. Um, so maybe I should stop talking. <laughs> um, so I mean, yeah, this does look kind of cool. You you're right, Audrey. It does look like um, like that kind of white water scene in Lord of the Rings. Um, so, yeah, totally. You could you could definitely do something like that. Maybe I'll add that to the list of things we could try. White water horses. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm drinking. I'm drinking a hot water with honey and lemon to try and uh, try and calm my throat. But I think, uh, hey, look at this. Got got suggestions for my cough. That's great. Grapefruit juice. Wow, I haven't tried that one. I do like grapefruit. Um, here, let me turn my turn my camera off. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we've we've kind of isolated stuff here. Now, what what we could do with that is run it into a pop sim. So, this would be my kind of you know workflow for creating white water and mist and things like that. So, you know, we can run those particles into here and now we can create a kind of you know sort of pseudo whitewater simulation so let's just put negative 9.8 that'll probably be too strong we'll set this to points so we can control the rate let's have a look what we're sourcing here so we've got 209,000 hey Hardy, how's it going <clears throat> Thanks for joining me. Um, I apologize, everybody, about my cough. Um, so, hey, that's all right. No worries. You made it. That's the main thing. At least these things are recorded. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, we've got a lot of particles here, 250,000. So we do want to kind of control the rate of them so we don't get 250,000 points every frame, although maybe that will be good. Let's just run this through. with sourcing points with bring in the velocity, we've got gravity. I might just put a drag down as well, just to make sure nothing goes completely crazy. And then, because we will have a lot of points, I'm going to put the life expectancy down, 0 0.5. Let's just see what we get. So there's our guide, you can see in blue. Um, and there's our points sort of raining down. So the gravity is very strong. So let's put that negative one. <clears throat> All right, and our particles are dying pretty quickly, so maybe maybe we'll make that two. Yeah, I imagine grapefruit juice would kill the bourbon. What what is mezcal? I seem to remember. Uh, well, I've forgotten, but it rings a bell. It is alcohol, is it not? Kind of sounds like a, uh, a cough syrup or something. Um, so, yeah, now you can see with gravity really low, they just sort of fly into the air. So there's kind of a happy medium, you know, maybe half gravity would be good. Don't always have to go 9.8, that's the thing. Like, it sometimes it's just too, too strong, especially for misty elements. So, there we go. So let's just merge this together. I'm going to set a color on here so I can see it a little clearer. Um, and merge it together with my flip sim and my wave. Why not? Load from disk. So there's our... <clears throat> finished the last short. I was featured on some ocean short. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. Let me uh, say put in the put in the comments, um, David, or next stream or something. Send a link. That's um. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one, Audrey. Um, but yeah, totally, definitely share it, David. I'd I'd love to see it. So yeah, I mean you can see what's happening here. We definitely need more points. So our five thousand rate is way too low. Let's go fifty thousand. 
And what am I going to do? I'm going to put a ground plane. So I might steal the ground plane from here so they have the same uh, size or the same position. <laughs> I, you know, whilst uh, whilst tidal waves are, are a lot of fun, I, uh, you know, I would uh, I would be scared if I got this as a uh, you know as an actual VFX shot. Um, the quality that I'm getting here, you know, is kind of uh, it's not really not really at the at the VFX you know level yet. I mean, it would we could get it there? It just would require a whole lot of a whole lot of work and a lot of simulating to really get it, you know, to that level. Um, so, yes, lots of fun, but also incredibly challenging, you know, to, to make it work. Um, so, <clears throat> we can see those blue points now just filling the sky, but if we render them really, really small, you know, they might just add a nice kind of element. Um, we can also, you know, just kind of, let's see. Oh, how long would they budget? Yeah, I don't know. It'd be a long time. A shot like this, be uh, be a good good few months, I reckon. It'd be a really really expensive shot to do this, you know, for reals. Um, take a lot of work, a lot of people, you know, these shots like this they they involve so many departments as well because. You've got, you know, you've got to build the assets. You've got to, <clears throat> you know, you've got to do the lighting. You've got to do compositing. There'd be, you know, a plate of people kind of running and screaming, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, there's there's a lot of kind of elements here that you know would would go across multiple departments. Um, but yeah, the effects side of it, it would be, it would be significant. Um, so you know, I'm just trying to do this in in uh, two hours every every week. Um, so that amount of work, I won't be able to get to the same quality. But if you if you invested a lot of time into it, you could. It's just yeah, it would take yeah, it'd take a long time. It takes it takes time to to really get quality into the work, and it takes a lot of simulation time to get the you know get the fidelity out of those sims. But this this approach, you know, is the reason I'm kind of showing you this stuff is because because things can take so long and because it does take a massive investment of time, the more you can kind of be smart about how you, you know, generate your effects and how you, how you use simulation rather than just going, cool, I'm going to simulate an entire tidal wave <clears throat> from the start. Think about, you know, how you can minimize that simulation time and that, that time spent waiting for things by creating geometry solutions or using particles as much as possible so that you know it's not just all flip because as soon as you rely like heavily on a really slow simulation like flip you know you're going to you're going to just create a massive bottleneck and if someone's waiting for you to finish off your shot you're just going to be like well look i'm sorry the way i set this up it takes 60 hours to simulate, so you know that's how long it's going to take to um, to see a to see a result. And often that is not really acceptable in film. Sometimes it is, but <coughs> it's good to you know it's good to create kind of smart solutions. So I'm going to try adding a sub step here and see if I can get a few more little streaky elements coming in. Although my source is not solving on the subframes, so it probably will make no difference. Um, yes, that's that's right. I mean, that is the, the good thing with film sometimes is that, you know, it may just be one shot or it may just be a couple of different camera angles and you never see the backside of it. It's, you know, you always, I always think about these 3D environments for film is like, you know, those cardboard kind of sets where you've got a building that looks good on the front, but behind it, there's nothing. And you can kind of not worry about a lot of stuff, which is great. You're all, always working to the camera. So even, you know, now I'm looking at this from the side, but really it's all about how it looks from here. And that's it. That's all I should really care about. But 
but it does give me, you know, looking at it in 3D also does give me some other, you know, ways to kind of see what's going on. But at the end of the day, it does all just come down to what does it look like from the camera? That's all that really matters. We've got a million points on this frame. So we've got a lot of points. Still, millions, not that many really, but <clears throat> let's now take our flips in and we'll just do a quick mesh on it and see what it looks like meshed. So particle separation point one. Wow, look at that scale. Let's dive in here, make sure I got that right. Point one. You know, in reality, particle separation should probably be down at like 0 0.02 or 0 0.05 or something to really get the fidelity. But let's see if we can force it. So I'll take the droplet scale right down, influence scale set to 1, 1 1.1. And you can just drop this particle separation. It's just basically creating um, a VDB. This, yeah, this stuff is just creating a VDB. So by dropping this, we're just creating a higher resolution VDB in there. And also the scale, all these things sort of create the scale of the blob of VDB on the particle. So you can see as I take that down, I get sort of more little blobs. Another way to do this would be to do a VDB from, uh, from particles. And then I can just sort of explicitly dial this in a bit kind of easier set a minimum radius and then I can just sort of do a point radius and then a voxel size. I find that this gives me a bit more of an intuitive way of dialing it in rather than these things which are all kind of balancing up and down. So usually I will do this method, VDB from particle particles and then convert VDB to turn it back into a mesh. So it converts polygons <clears throat> and you can see I get like a lot of tiny little blobs. So I can now inflate this a little bit if I want to. If I set it to one, that will be the scale coming out of the flip sim. So that is kind of the native scale that the flip sim is simulating at. So you can see point one is really small. Uh, like, I mean, it's really low res. These are like balls flying around. So we're not gonna get great amount of detail out of a sim this low res, but we can try. Yeah, you know, we can try and force it. So let's take it down to half. And then I'm going to put a VDB smooth in here. So smooth SDF. Because we're using a sine distance field, an SDF, that's distance VDB is an SDF. We can use the smooth SDF. And this has Laplacian flow and mean curvature flow, which are really good smoothing for fluids. They sort of preserve a lot of the detail as much as possible. They give this re really nice fluid kind of look. Whereas if you use things like Gaussian, Gaussian, however you want to say it, they're really aggressive blurs and they just get rid of all detail. That can be useful for certain things, but not when you want splashes. So Laplacian I find is a really good one for preserving as much detail, but also doing some really nice smoothing. Now, all of this stuff is kind of in here as well. You can see filtering, you've got there, mean curvature flow. You also have this dilate and erode section. So <clears throat> the best way to illustrate what, what the point of that is, is to put two spheres next to each other, turn them to a VDB. So now we're getting into the uh, tutorial phase of the, uh, of the stream where I actually explain something. So. If I convert that, uh, that's not what I use, VDB from polygons like this, and then I'll just duplicate that and move this one over beside it. So I've got my two polygon spheres here. Now, if I combine these two, so combine VDB, and I'll just use SDF union, I think, there we go. So now I've got these two blobs. Imagine these were two blobs of my particles from my flip sim next to each other. And we've got this smooth SDF, which we can put on and that smooths them, which is great. But the way that it works in here with the particle fluid surface, we sort of sandwich this with a VDB, uh, what is it? VDB reshape, reshape SDF with a dilate. 
And then on the other side, we have an erode. And what happens when you dilate a VDB into itself like this? So when I offset them like that, you can see they start to you know go into each other. And then when I smooth though, it actually smooths that junction between them and joins them together. <coughs> so that when I finally erode by the same amount that I dilated, so if I copy that and put it back, you can see that it actually joins those two spheres together. So we have this ability to kind of dial in this sort of attachment, this sort of meta ball blending to each other result. And that in itself can be a really cool effect. You know, you could create a, a water drop, dropping off another water drop or something, or a tap, you know, that, that kind of look of a water drop holding onto a tap and dropping off. So that is what the dilate and erode kind of thing is doing on a particle fluid surface. When you turn that on, you can see they're linked. They do the same thing and they're linked. You turn one on, you get both. And in between, you have the smooth and then a final smooth, which is, if you look at the network, it would be another smooth right at the end to do a final smoothing over everything. And then finally, convert to mesh. So, you know, once you understand that, it kind of tells you, you know, what, what you want to do in terms of if you're using these dilate and erode, it sort of helps you understand, well, if I increase my dilate, then I'm going to get more blending. Or if I decrease it, I'm going to get a little bit of blending. So it's good to, good to understand how these things work. Um, and, you know, I've just created now a really good kind of replicator, replicate, replicant of, uh, of, you know, the particle fluid surface, but it gives me much greater control and much greater kind of uh, visibility as to what's happening. So I can put that on there. It's going to go through and you can see there's my dilate, my smooth. And my road pulls back in final smooth you can see that smooth is going to get rid of a lot of my really small things um, and then the convert so <coughs> I don't know if that's necessarily better than what I had I think what I had here is more detailed but you know anyway just just to uh, kind of explain that stuff a little better let's have a look at this through camera and maybe combined with our wave like that and there's our kind of particle misty stuff on top. These meshes are pretty high resolution, so you know you do kind of have to be a little bit careful with them. I mean, in terms of they're slow to calculate. So, you know, flip and the flip mesh that's generated, they are very slow things to process. So it's just something, you know, to be aware of. There's a lot of mesh coming out of this thing million million five hundred thousand polys so relatively high res let's uh let's just do a flip book and see what this kind of looks like i'm going to take this start new sequence yeah that's that's right david i think you know obviously you are limited in the quality um, with real-time engines, but it is getting better all the time, which is amazing to watch the progress there. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I think it will be really interesting to see what happens as that quality gets better. Um, and hopefully that stuff trickles into film as well, where we can use those real-time things so we're not always waiting for crazy long simulations. Titanic 2, oh dear. I haven't seen that, Audrey. I'll have to look it up. Is there really a Titanic 2? Wow. They said it couldn't happen twice. Looks amazing. 
Um, all right, so where's my... <laughs> I think, yeah I, yeah, I didn't see the trailer, but I just, I just saw the poster for it. All right, so I think, you know, because I don't want this stream to be just you guys watching me do flip sims, um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll simulate this at a much higher resolution during the week, and then we can come back and have a look at, you know, the kind of result at a, at a much lower particle separation. Um, and then hopefully, you know, that'll kind of, that'll kind of work. Now, so, you know, it's kind of okay. It's not, not amazing. Let's just, it's definitely way too blobby to kind of use at the moment. But in terms of the processes, in terms of the, getting the flip sim in, that stuff's all kind of working. I guess the next thing that would kind of um, benefit from, you know, maybe attaching a flip sim to it is if I just duplicate this pop net here and maybe our building spray, you know, if we go and have a look, we've got our, we've got our kind of, uh, let me just hide that spray foam, make sure I'm looking at the right thing. I don't know why that's showing me this. Did I write over that? Maybe I did. Spray from, oh, I did. Silly me, I didn't change the name. Ah, what a rookie mistake. Um, building spray. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to change this. Let me go, I'm just gonna call that, put an A in there. Write that out again. So silly. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, oh, it's a little bit slow. You have to be have to be careful when you're copying file caches and using them in various places. If I had copied it in here and used it again, which I have done multiple times, it changes the name for you because you can't have two nodes named the same. But in different geometry containers, you can. So um, yeah, kind of uh, kind of doesn't. Kind of doesn't work, and I, I wrote over what this is, which I'll just cancel it there and let's have a look, see, make sure. So this is the kind of interaction with the building, right? So when the building gets hit, we're spraying these particles. So what I was thinking was that we could use this stuff as a source for flip. Here's that like really super missile trail type one, which needs a bit of work, I think, but let's try running that. If I paste my dotnet here, let's try running that into a flip sim. So what I need to do, I don't want to just continually source flip here. So I'm going to blast based on age maybe. So I'll say at age, whoops, at age greater than 0 0.25 points, maybe even less, 0.1. So you can see that just removes everything that's greater than 0.1, even less, less. There we go. So, and we could also, before that, just get the original stream. Yeah, that's, yeah, Titanic 2. It just uh, doesn't really, doesn't really make sense, does it? It's sunk. How did it come back? Did they build another one? I guess that's what happened. Um, so here's our original points. So we could use those, but let's have a look at what else we've got. We've got our stream pop replicate one, and then we had another pop replicate. So that's the pink one. We'll, we won't use that one. Let's just use this one. And then blast based on age. There we go. So that might work better. Ah, there we go. So that's just the kind of tips of those trails. That might work cool. Let's try that in the dotnet and see what happens. So you can see we're kind of getting flip emitted now from these, from those trails, which is, you know, a nice kind of splashy element. So that's cool. Let's have a look. Do we have in here? We do have our building collider. So let's just copy that and put it inside, see if it works. T 
Hang on. There we go. So there's those buildings that we were using as our kind of a mission point. Ah, Hardik, yes, I watched it. <laughs> um, I watched it straight after our last stream. I was wondering when you were going to ask me. Um, it was cool. I liked it. it. It's funny, you know, it struck me watching that. I kind of forgot that I was watching a Pixar trailer. <coughs> the style of it, to me, anyway, it doesn't feel like Pixar as much. It sort of feels more like a... Um, I don't know, like a DreamWorks or a Sony animation kind of project. Um, but it looks cool. It looks it looks really cool. I, you know, I love I love the stuff that Pixar do, and they're always pushing. They're always pushing things, which is great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just stylistically, the characters and the the animation style and the look, it just struck me as being a bit more like uh, I don't know, like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, that kind of style of animation. And, and character design so i've got buildings in here now as colliders so you can see that there's an interaction happening with our flip it's kind of cool what else could we do here we could invert this so it actually doesn't get the real points but just gets the trailing stuff So that the points are still those kind of particles, but then maybe they're trailing behind them, flip. Maybe. And then we could put a second blast down, which deletes greater than. So we're just kind of sampling for a very small section. Because you don't want to just, you don't want to just source flip forever. It's just, it's too heavy. What do you think about the Luca trailer, Hardik? What do you like about it? I assume you like it. That's why you're telling me to watch it. Um, what do you What do you like about it? Um, so yeah, let's let's have a look at our collision guide, <coughs> just to see, make sure it's kind of working. You can see there's a lot of detail missing. So it's always, it is always good to check. It may just be down to resolution. So you can actually increase just the separation of the collision resolution. So we could take that down. I think we need to do it from the start again. You can see when I do that, the collision volume is actually now much higher resolution than the particle separation. So it's always handy. I think it's Pixar anyway. It'd be funny if it actually was Sony Animation. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Pixar. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just something about it doesn't look like a Pixar movie to me. I don't know what it is. I haven't seen many of the later ones anyway, but um, yeah. Especially the water simulation. I, I have to say, I mean, I watched it a little... Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, there was some really cool water in there. It was a while ago I watched it. Yeah. Very cool kind of transition between water and land stuff as well. That I thought was cool. Um, so there we go. Our collisions are looking better now. If we hide that, we can kind of... We should be able to see, like, the water sort of colliding... What I would like to see is water kind of spraying through the gaps in the buildings and just, you know, just feeling a bit more interesting. We could even take down that friction for the flip object. We could crank it up for the ground plane, as we have. But then, yeah, maybe on this one, you know, we don't have super high friction or something, and that just might help it stay a bit splashier. Yes, they, they definitely did. Although, you know, arguably they didn't do much simulation in terms of water simulation in, in 
Finding Nemo. Um, because most of it took place under the water. It was more about environment. But um, yeah, still really, really cool. I mean, I think, you know, the thing that's amazing about Pixar is just how they push the lighting and the, the sort of color and the look of things. It's just incredible what, you know, what they're able to do. And the story as well is, is really, you know, an important part of it, which is great. Um, definitely do it, do it, do a water project. I mean, you know, all of the things that I've been talking about with this, it's all, it's all part of it. No matter what sort of water project you do, you do have to be kind of smart about the way that you do it because it is slow, you know, it can be really slow to, to work with. I'm going to take the gravity down on this a little bit, I think. Yeah, maybe maybe these trails aren't the best ones to use for flip because, yeah, you can kind of see this really sort of get this real kind of water pouring out effect from it. And, and I feel like that kind of doesn't really work that well. Maybe it won't be super noticeable, but um, yeah, I feel like it kind of, it looks a bit, looks a bit kind of funny. Maybe we just want to limit it to, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. What to do, what to do. Maybe I do just want to limit it to those, oh, no, no, no. Just got to play around with this stuff, you know, till it looks, till it looks right. Maybe we just take the older particles or something. Don't know. Not sure what the best idea is. <coughs> Bit more European. Yeah, yeah, I think, well, I don't know, the, the sets and stuff feel kind of European, don't they? Um, Well, I'm just going to let this simulate. What I'm going to do is set this to particle separation of 0 0.05 so that we can see some detail. I'm going to copy this and make sure I change the name. And I don't have to because it does automatically do it. But let's call this like spray flip and see what it looks like V1. And I'm going to copy the start frame, paste rules reference and tick that on, set it to write files. Start new sequence. Make sure I'm looking through the camera. I'm gonna hit that. I'm going to grab some water and I'll be right back.
Hey, I'm back. Just in time too. Didn't didn't miss it. Thanks, Audrey. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my throat is killing me. But gotta keep gotta keep doing these streams. Don't wanna don't wanna let you guys down. So there we go. We can see some nice building interaction, which is cool. I'm still not convinced that you know maybe this is the best source, but you can see it adds that kind of nice flip nature to to the effect so maybe combined with everything else that we're doing it might kind of you know tie in nicely we don't even have to necessarily mesh it we could just combine it with everything else that we have so you can see well a lot of that a lot of what's going on there is kind of taking place behind the wave all this sort of building interaction um nah i'm, I'm good thanks i will soldier on only half an hour half an hour left um, so, you know, just having another element in there, it might just help. There's some really cool things going on and, and perhaps, you know, perhaps we do mesh that one and you know, we'll just do a particle fluid surface. Um, let's go particle separation 0 0.05. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Can't keep me down. Um, can't tell you the amount of uh, the amount of films that I've worked on whilst being incredibly sick, just uh, just so just so I can get the work out the door. It's uh, an unfortunate unfortunate part of the film industry is that uh, it stops for no man. Um, so yeah, probably want to take that down a little bit more. <laughs> Gross, Vegemite. Hate Vegemite. It makes me feel worse. <laughs> it's all those spiders. All the spiders that I eat, eat for breakfast. Um, all right, so let's have a look at this. You can see the scale. You know, is not. It's not really working. So. Back on the Vegemite trail. Uh, it's it's like eating dirt covered in tar. Um, I'm not a fan. It's like... Um, I actually like things that taste kind of like something rootish. Um, it's... I actually like things that kind of taste like Vegemite, but not Vegemite itself. So, like, you know when you roast, like, a... A sweet potato or something, and it goes really kind of caramelly, salty, yeasty. That is the that's what it is. It is like a yeast paste, which sounds great. Um, but yeah, the, like that that really sort of rich, caramelly, burnt kind of flavor. I really like that. And Vegemite is kind of like that, but but also incredibly salty and and just yeah, it's not for me. Most people would, uh, there's a lot of Australians love Vegemite, but there's a lot of people that don't like it as well. <coughs> yeah, it's really strong. Just got to use, use a tiny amount. Um, all right, let's have a look at this combined with this stuff just to see what it kind of, what it kind of looks like together. And, you know, having a mesh like this in there might just help add some like blobby elements that might, you know, might just support the the real particle based stuff as well but as you can see the resolution just you know it just needs to be much greater so the scale of the points you know all these shapes they just need to be a lot smaller so we can try and do it with you know with our vdb method instead vdb from particles maybe Let's see if we can get the result that we want out of that because then we can sort of explicitly set some of these things a little clearer do that vdb do you like vegemite aram having been living here for a while there we go so we're getting you know you can see with this method you can really kind of force the detail a little bit and and really dial in the shape and the size of the p scale 
a little bit easier than the particle fluid surface so that's why I kind of prefer it especially if it's going to be like a really splashy kind of thing you know having little blobs might might just kind of help um, you know do that which is a much harder thing to achieve with the particle fluid surface so let's have a look at that so it's a little bit better still scale you know these blobs it's just not really working but um yeah you know i think we could get there we just need to simulate at a much higher resolution and then hopefully we can you know we can kind of get a better result out of that having the buildings in there is a really cool thing though i think uh what we should do is go back to our other one copy that go back to our other flip sim <laughs> and many and many other many other odd and delicious things Audrey I can't say I've had uh, I have had snails in um, where was it I'll I'm probably not saying that correctly but um, I had snails there I haven't eaten frogs though <laughs> Vegemite tidal wave that's right man that would be that would be gross kill me now um Wave base, here we are, dot net. <laughs> Sounds like a scene from um, from the Ten Commandments or something. So let's put our buildings in here. Error. This reference should be to the wave, where, where did I get that from? Building spray. So I need to reference that correctly. Building spray, outbuilding collider. There we go. So I can take that path and update it in here. There we go. So let's take our particle, our collision separation. Let's go 0 0.05 again. Maybe even 0.08 is probably enough. And let's see what this looks like with the buildings in there with this flip. Might look cool. Let's try it. Collisions definitely add to the time. Um, so, you know, I do try and avoid for as long as possible be just because, you know, it does really kind of, um, it does really kind of chew up the time, the simulation time. So if you can do things without it, it's a good idea. But obviously, you know, it's going to add that level of interaction that you need. You can see it's stopping the flow of that stuff coming forwards and that's good that's kind of what we you know what we want we want to see that correct kind of interaction with the environment so i think that's a good thing let's have a look and you get this kind of stuff happening as well which is great where when you have a collision you get this sort of cresting effect where it pushes against the building and sort of then splashes back up which is really cool so i'd like to see more of that sort of stuff happening let's have a look out here with the wave because um it's always good to keep an eye on where that wave is in relation to where our effects are well, there we go so we are getting that cresting in there which is cool uh now we could have the wave in there as a collider as well let's try that um, what do we want to do? We can take our wave here, this point. And actually, if we go back to our other wave, what have we got here? We've got inside wave. That's not what we want. Oh, although... Hmm, we could potentially use that, but uh, no, nah, maybe not. Let's try building spray. We have some other wave things here extrude volume like this one that one would be a good one for a collider so let's do a null on that we'll say out wave collision wave base object merge there we 
is. And I might, what I might do actually is take that from there, copy this extrude volume, and then I can control it. <coughs> uh, because I don't want it to be so deep. I only really need it to be like that. So I'm going to turn this into a VDB. So, you know, I want to minimize how much size I'm filling because it's going to end up, you know, if I had it massive, it would end up with a really big volume and that's really slow. So let's plug it in. Uh, actually, what I'll do is create two nulls. Say out wave geo and out wave VDB. I won't plug it in because I'm going to reference it like this. dot dot slash dot dot slash outwave geo deforming uh, yeah I'll leave that off for now volume sample outwave VDB so now I should see there's my collision shape of my wave cool and I've got an offset here I might just leave that off and with all collisions, it's good to check the collision guide. So we'll just tick that on and see what we get. There we go. There's our wave. Cool. So now the things that get kind of splashed up, once they hit the wave again, they'll be push pushed forward. So it might, you know, it might be really interesting. It might also force some things to kind of shoot out crazy because they go inside the wave. So you might have to be careful with that. Um, but it might, it might put some interesting interaction in there where those things that get shot up kind of hit the wave and then come back down. Or, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's always good to try though. really see that collision working I'm seeing a lot of points inside here so I think what's what might be happening here is that our wave is very basically our, our source exists right on the same plane as our wave so what I might actually do is just peak this a little bit come back here and put a peak down and see, if I peak this way, just negative, or positive actually, looks like. I can push that wave back, just a little bit. Don't need to do it too much, but just a little bit beyond where it was, because our source exists right there. If we have a look at our points, that's where our points exist. We want to kind of push it behind. Mm, we could also just maybe um, transform it even. Might kind of work as well. <coughs> Where we just transform it slightly back. So we're in X. So we could just do, you know, something, something like that. Because the peak kind of pushes it in weird directions because it's based on the normals. So maybe even just slightly offsetting it backwards might also help. All right, let's try that. Got some crazy velocities happening there. Let's just check. I'm just going to turn off the wave for a second. See if I still have those velocities. Yeah, so I guess that's imparting a lot of crazy velocities. Maybe, maybe because of the V that exists. There's no V on there. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to create one, see if it makes any difference. Ah. 
a look at that. So set, even though there was no V on there, I think because there was no V, it was calculating one for us, which um, is not great because it was imparting some crazy velocities on there. So just setting a zero velocity will just then impart that onto the particles when they collide. So it's pulling that off of the geo. That's why we have two things. So the volume representation is one, but any point-based things like velocity and position normals, they come off this soft part. So it's probably a calculation that's taking place in there because there was no V it's automatically calculating it. And then it's just creating really high velocities. Um, so setting it to zero, it's just a good way to negate that. And now we can see we're getting much more predictable behavior. And if I turn this off, getting no points inside, which is great. Now what I want to see is when this stuff collides here, I want to see this hit the wave and get pushed back down. Let's see if it happens. Should start to see it. There we go. Now, because this wave is set to zero, it's going to pick up that zero velocity. So it will kind of just collect it rather than sh having it shoot forwards. Hopefully it'll just push it along. You can see it just being pushed along there. Let's have a look through the camera. You can barely see it over the top of the building, but. Hopefully we'll see some, some of that stuff happening here as well on these guys. And we've, this is only a very small sample of the collisions as well. So, you know, once we get all the collisions in there, hopefully this will you know, kind of feel a bit more interactive. So that would be the next step is just to bring a lot more collisions in. You know, you can see, if we look at that render, this was the entire environment. So all these little things might kind of introduce little interesting collisions. This building as well needs to be brought in and run through the whole kind of setup. Because you can see at the moment, it's just passing through, which looks kind of crappy. Um, so, see we'll see what happens on this building now as well and this is the static building so ultimately as well i will have to bring in the rbd destruction of this building and probably do that to the other buildings too and then use that as the collider so a deforming object with it colliding and that will provide interesting behavior as well so that you know as it kind of deforms and gets toppled over it will interact with the flip and create um you know interesting kind of changes to the simulation and flick things around and, you know all that stuff will help um your pc will die trying to make yeah I, you're a, what pc have you got Aaron? I, are you on a laptop still or did you get a workstation um look i mean this you know it's fairly high res but it's not crazy high res there's <clears throat> let's see we've got only a million points so it's not not that bad at all um but you know work work within your means try something a little a little less kind of large scale maybe um laptop zoe zoe says laptop well you you could do this sort of stuff on a laptop and i mean everything that i've done up until the flip point in the previous two streams you know that's definitely possible on a laptop but yeah i mean it's possible you will just you know it'll be slower and a little bit harder to work with um 
one thing you know with doing massive simulations on a computer that can't quite handle it i i worked on a laptop with eight gig of ram for years and i was able to do some pretty you know large scale simulations one thing that you can do when you're writing things to disk quite often what you'll see is if you do don't do go too high res and you only have eight gig of ram say it'll crash it might just Houdini might just close or it might error or something. What you can do is actually turn off the cache on your .NET and then write to disk. What it does when you don't have that on, you'll see, you know, when I do have it on usually, I just usually have it set to the default, which is to cache five gig into memory. But let's say you only have eight gig, then, you know, five gig of cache memory is gonna take up most of your, most of your memory. Most of it will be taken up already by Houdini and your operating system, so that's probably too large. But what you can do to get around that, when you write to disk, just turn that off. You won't get your cache in the viewport, so you can't... You can see, I can still hit play, but I won't get that blue bar, so I won't be able to scrub once it's simulated. But if you write it to disk, it'll only store a single frame's worth of memory, and it doesn't just fill up memory. So you can actually push, you know, your computer to do much higher simulations with that off than with that on. So that, that's what I always did working on my laptop. Just turn that off before I write. And then I can write out like super high resolution simulations on a laptop. And then turn it back on if I need to do any viewport based stuff. But um, yeah, once I figured that out, I was able to, to push my simulations much, much higher. Um, so yeah, that, that might be something that you guys can try that if you're working on lower um, lower spec computers and work workstations or laptops that can't handle this stuff, then um, you know, definitely definitely try out something like that. Uh, now I'm gonna call this something appropriate now, wave based flip sim. And so because I have you know, quite a lot of RAM. I could increase this and that'll give me better scrubbing ability. You know, you could see before when I was doing this, the little blue cache bar down the bottom of the timeline was getting eaten up. So once it starts to be removed from this end as it plays through, it just means that it's filled up, you know, 5K, five K, um, 5,000 megabytes or five gig. And then it just eats away the stuff that was before and keeps adding it to the front. So if you want more, you can, you know, you can increase that and then you can play it. I'm going to have a look at what this looks like at 05. Just see if we can get, you know, a handful of frames. See how slow it is as well. Um, how much RAM have you got, Aaron? <coughs> gonna take a while although it's not too slow i mean oh 32 gig you'll be fine you'll be fine i was i only I only recently upgraded to 128 gig from 32 and uh yeah you can do most things on 32 hey rizwan how's it going um yeah 32 is 32 is good zoe you've got a 2014 macbook pro um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you you may struggle with that, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you could do stuff. It's just, you do need to kind of work within, work within the limitations of the computer that you have and, and simplify things a little bit. Um, but everything that I've done previous, you know, prior to doing this flip stuff has been pretty um, achievable on a, you know, low spec machine. But yeah. I, I think, you know, you can kind of achieve some really good results on anything. Laptop. I work on my Microsoft Surface and, you know, that's pretty low spec. It's only got 8 gig of RAM. Um, I can do stuff on it, you know. It's just about kind of, yeah, not pushing it beyond, you know, where it's reasonable. Hey, thank you. I 
it looks like your um, name is written in Korean, maybe. Um, I can't read that, but thank you for the comment. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, I can sort of get this into a really good result, but it is going to take work, you know, to really polish this. Um, but hopefully, you know, we've got the foundations for a lot of really good effects. It's just about trying to make them all work together. And th this is often the hardest part is, you know, we can create as many effects as we like and put them all together, but then getting them all to work well together and polishing them to a high degree is, is often the hardest part, you know. Um, but I will go through and simulate this stuff during the week at a much higher resolution. And we can see what the difference is. I mean, even at 0 0.5, you can see that we're getting much higher sort of resolution, much better sort of smaller scale um, shapes, which is cool. Um, <clears throat> we used to say in Hindi, I'm, like, I'm not even going to try pronouncing that by saying, don't go, let us learn more about Houdini. <laughs> um, well, I'll be here every week to teach you guys Houdini. Um, so, yeah, you can see 0 0.05, we're getting more smaller shapes. So 0 0.02, you know, might be, might be a good place to try next and see kind of what, what result we get. Um, yeah, I should, I should rest, but I just can't, I just can't. Too many effects to do, so little time. Um, so that's 1,800,000. Even that, you know, is not that many points really in the grand scheme of things. Um, <laughs> just try to pronounce Hindi. Uh, I, I wouldn't even know where to start, Hardik. I would say Tu Si Mat Jao. Probably butchered it. Um, I've never, I've never, I've never learnt Hindi. Um, but I do like languages. <laughs> How did I do? J A O O is a hard one. I'm not. I wasn't really sure what to do with that. Um, <clears throat> you have one question. Why are you creating wave using clip simulation? I thought you created wave mesh and whitewater for that mesh using unique particle simulation. So yeah, I I'm not creating a wave um, using flip. I'm just trying to, I'm just sort of experimenting really to see if I can add flip to generate some, you know, some interesting fluid motion. But the main effect is still the, the mesh wave. So don't, don't worry. We've still got the mesh wave. That is still the main effect. And all of these parts are still particles. Um, but I'm just sort of experimenting and seeing if, you know, adding a little bit of flip to this can just help sort of tie the effect together and get some of that nice fluid motion without doing the whole wave as, um, as a mesh. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, if, if you weren't here at the start, this is the render that I did over the week of, of where we were up to last stream. Um, so, yeah, this... This is still, you know, exactly as we were doing it in the previous two streams, but I'm just trying to, you know, add a few flip elements. And this one probably has gotten a little out of hand, you know, it is a bit large for what I wanted. But um, I think, you know, I think it just will help to have that. Let's have a look at the mesh and see what we're getting from this. This now will be... Again, much more high resolution. This this sort of stuff can can be a little challenging on a laptop, you know, because of the scale of the mesh and the the amount of polys that you're generating. Um, but you know, it's, again, not not impossible. Uh, let's have a look at this original one here. So, voxel size 0 0.025, point radius scale. Have a look at the smooth. Convert. Now, to get back some of those points, we can add a little ISO value to inflate this a little bit. 
yeah, it's not really, not really doing it. Maybe the smooth is killing a lot. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, there we go. All right. So yeah, I'll take that off. You can hear the crows massing outside. Um, so let's have a look at that. Combined with the wave. Yeah. Give that a give that like a color. So this will be like a really white watery kind of effect as well. So it's it's not gonna be like a fluid, it's gonna be like a really sort of bright white type effect. So it might be kind of okay at that level of detail. Let's have a look. Smooth shaded. Um, maybe I'll leave that like that. Let's have a look. Oh, now wave. I've got the view flag on the wrong spot. Sorry, I can't see it. So there's our wave base. So, you know, it adds that layer of kind of foam and churn. I think the scale of it is, it is probably too large. I definitely want to tame that down a little bit. You know, if this was sort of half that scale, I think that would be appropriate for the scale of this effect. And then we can have a look at, you know, kind of rendering it as well um, in the next stream or the stream after, I'm not sure, you know, it depends where we get up to, but we will look at like setting this up for a render. And I might also look at doing this in Redshift as well. These frames that I did were in Mantra and they look all right, but um, the render times, you know, you can see here, we got 18 minutes for this particular frame and they go up. So 35 minutes a frame. It's not bad for a full HD with all this stuff going on, but it's pretty, it's pretty slow. I'd like to improve that a little bit. So I may look at doing this in Redshift, which will kind of help, but it's also a challenge, you know, Mantra is really good because it just sort of works. You can just apply materials and it all hooks up into particle attributes and all that sort of stuff. Applying things with Redshift, it's a little bit of work and, and sometimes you can't get, you know, the same results that you could get with Mantra. But it's worth trying because of the speed increase that you can get. And the quality of the renders is quite nice as well with, with Redshift. Just, um, you know, particles and some other custom kind of things might be a little bit challenging. But um, it's definitely worth a shot. Uh, no, I won't. I won't touch Karma. <laughs> um, I I don't really like. I don't really like the way that Karma is integrated into Houdini. Um, I just yeah, it's probably unless unless that gets picked up by studios, uh, that way of working, um, I probably won't bother learning Karma. Um, for now, anyway, I, I kind of feel like it's still quite beta in its integration. So I'm just going to let it go for a while and see if they improve the way that it's integrated. Um, yeah, I, I just don't really like using it. I've found it very clunky and just, it just sort of, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me the way that they've set it up. Um, but Redshift is pretty good. It's very similar to Mantra. Um, the way that it's hooked up, but you do have to use very specific redshift shaders and everything that you do in the material context has to be a redshift node. So that can be a little bit challenging to figure out the differences sometimes. But um, yeah, it will be a good, you know, a good thing to kind of work through and just try and figure out um, with you guys. So yeah, I'm going to go through this week and simulate this stuff out. I am going to reduce the velocities, I think, <coughs> of this wave base effect so that I can get it just a little bit smaller, you know, just take that scale down so that it, it feels right. At the moment, it feels about two or three times too big for what I wanted. I'm sort of really covering up my main wave effect here. Um, so I'm going to try and take that down and just, you know, improve, improve the look of that and up the resolution so that I can get a really nice fine um, 
mesh and fine kind of scale. Uh, would you say you can get everything done for what you need with Houdini alone? Yes, I only use Houdini really apart from um, compositing. I mean, you can composite in Houdini, but it's not really, you know, it's not really the best for it. Um, I use Nuke for compositing, but that's that's all I use. I don't use anything else. So you can, I mean, modeling things like that arguably is not the best in Houdini, but you can still do it. And I just, you know, while I was learning Houdini, I had 3D Studio Max, which was my previous software alongside, and I would jump between them. But eventually I just ditched the other one and you just learn to adapt to Houdini. And you can, yeah, you can do everything in it. I, you know, I, I bring in a lot of assets from maybe I'll buy them online or free assets, things like that. I bring a lot of assets into Houdini and I might be provided assets from Maya and places like that. But um, Houdini is a total package. You can do everything in it. So yeah, ab absolutely. You can do everything with Houdini alone. Um, whether, you know, some things are better or worse in it is another story, but I just sort of, you know, I don't really want to have multiple packages that I have to jump between because it creates problems and it's a challenge sometimes getting things in and out of Houdini or in and out of Maya. Um, so yeah, you can. That's that's what I do. I don't don't really use any other software apart from Houdini. Um, so yeah, there you go. Well, it's 12 o'clock. It's time for me to go and have another tea, rest my, my sore throat. Um, thanks for joining me again, guys. Sorry for the coughing and the water breaks. Um, I hope, I hope it's been informative. Please let me know if you have any requests for tutorials or, um, just effects, you know, these aren't, these aren't like proper full on pre-recorded tutorials, obviously, you know, I'm just sort of figuring this stuff out as I go. You guys can watch me sort of, you know, fumble my way through the world of, of VFX. But hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight into how, you know, someone in visual effects works with these types of effects. Um, and yeah, keep, keep the suggestions coming. I've got a nice big list of, nice big list of effects here. Earthquake, black hole, cool space effect, volcano, planet colliding, space debris. Um, keep them coming. If I missed any, let me know. Um, and yeah, put them in the comments. Or if you have questions about specific things that I'd, went over but didn't really explain terribly well please um please just paste them in the comments and i'll try my best to answer those questions um and yeah go, go back and have a look at the previous streams you know prior to this we worked on a tornado and then there have been a whole bunch of things right back to the very start we worked on a full kind of king kong shot which was kind of interesting so um yeah if you're new to the streams thanks for joining me but please go back and have a look at the previous ones as well <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure there's something you can find in there, Zoe, that uh, you'll be able to do on your, your laptop. I read that as poor laptop, but uh, yeah, poop laptop. I'm sure, I'm sure you can find something to do. Maybe, maybe that, I'll put that on my uh, list of things that you could do, that I can do in future streams is like achievable laptop effects. Um, thanks for joining me, Aram. Good to see you too. I hope you're doing well. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'll see you again next week and we'll keep working on this tidal wave and we'll come back and have a look at how the, um, how the simulations turned out as well. And then maybe we can have a look at rendering and see what else we can add. We'll probably do some more destruction as well. We've only done one building so far, but it'd be cool to get all the other ones tumbling over and some other interactions. Thanks, Audrey. Have a good week. Have a good week, guys. Thanks for joining me. See you guys soon.